What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're checking out this absolute beauty from Shira Goroff. This is a Custom Division F95NL CD. I believe, I don't know the exact history on this one, but it's from, I believe, 2016, and is uh, inside their original 500 knives um, in their kind of sequential numbering. So a couple things I wanted to talk about with this, with this particular knife before we get started. Remember, this is a casual conversation. Like we're at a coffee shop taking a look at some of our knives. That's number one. Number two, this particular example is a knife that I personally have carried, and uh, it is it is used. So, you know, this is is one that I had a lot of requests for when I posted a short earlier in the week, and uh, some people wanted to see more about this knife. So, it's not mint. It is considered a user, and uh, but I guess people wanted to see it, so I. Uh, I am not going to stop you guys from wanting to uh, request content. Um, just a reminder, Bladezilla.ca, a lot of the stuff that I show on this channel, not obviously used or carried uh, knives, are available for sale um, on the website. So Bladezilla.ca, follow me on Instagram as well. If you're not already, that is also below there on the page. So there we go, nice little shout out. And uh, let's get down to business. So. As I said, I have carried this. It's a user. It is not a 100% mint pristine example of this knife. There's 30 of them. Like I said, 2016 blade show. S90V blade. It runs on roller bearings. And it is a custom division knife, as you can tell. It is by far the smoothest knife in my collection in terms of action. It is a heavy stock blade, I'm guessing four mils, based on kind of just what I'm looking at here. Um, it's not light, it's not uh, super skeletonized, although it is a little bit on the inside, and we'll get into that. But it is one hell of a knife that, uh, you know, we're coming up on, what, four, seven years, seven years old, and uh, in the first 500 sequential knives um, in the custom division. So that's cool. I, I do want to show, before we go into anything, I want to show you this card. So this is number 457. So we've got F95 inlay, which is NL, fun fact, NL means inlay. Uh, CPM S90V, titanium and carbon fiber. Roller bearing system, we've got an authentication sticker, an autograph from the man himself. You want to uh, freeze frame this, print this up, put it on your fridge next to your grocery list. Your wife will certainly appreciate it. And number 457, which is just cool. And then a bunch of writing that I, uh, we guarantee the quality of knives for the entire duration of their useful service life, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's the kind of knife that you, in this particular case, if you're not happy with it, you send it over to them through uh, Recon 1, I believe, and uh, you know what? It'll be good for another seven years. Um, this is an absolute beauty of a knife, and uh, one that I'm proud to own. It kind of came in on a bit of a trade in a multi-knife deal, like quite a while ago, actually, and uh, I just kind of forgot about it, threw it into the case, and uh, you know, the, my, the Bladezilla business was kind of starting, and uh, I didn't really think too much of it. And uh, just the other day, I pulled it out. I was like, yeah, you know what, I'll throw a, a YouTube short on the channel of it and show you the, show you the knife and uh, multiple requests for it, actually, to uh, film a video on it. So I guess here we go. Let's, let's do that. So let's start off. So it is an F95, so we should have a 95 mil blade. Uh, which is just shy of four inches, as we can kind of see here. Uh, three and seven eighths, something like that. Overall length of, depending on how good your eyesight is. Uh, currently it's late at night and mine is not good. Uh, we're at, yeah, what, eight and three quarters? Maybe a little less, eight and five eighths. Uh, somewhere around there. Uh, Weight-wise, look at this action, by the way. Oh, jeez. That's nuts. That is like literally the best action you'll ever get on a Shira Goroff. Uh, let's zero this puppy out here. Throw a cloth on it. And uh, we don't want metal on metal. Any guesses? Uh, I'm going to say it's less than five, but probably four and a half ounces. And 
Set over 4.1. Ah, close. I'm sorry, guys. It's just zero, just in case. No, there you go. 4.1 ounces uh, with the carbon fiber. So it's uh, it's right where it needs to be. It's definitely a thick knife. Like uh, it's 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 thick. T h i c c, uh, as they say on TikTok. It's got some girth to it, and uh, you notice it right away. No backspacer. Uh, heavy, heavy, thick blades. It reminds me of like a, kind of like an F ninety five zero with how thick and flat the top is, and it just swings, man. That is, uh, in, it, just a beautiful, absolutely beautiful knife. Absolutely love it. So let's let's kind of take a look here, and uh, you know I'm so excited. I'm getting fingerprints all over it and uh, whatnot. But and when I say uh, and when I say this is a user for me or a carry, it's that's all it is. is uh, you can see it gets snails because it does end up in your pocket, particularly down here on the hardware, right? Some up around the edge, like it's not mint, right? And this is why this ends up in the collection and. You just forget about it, right? You don't really think people want to see it. One of 30 in the world of this kind of, look at the clip. That should be a good indicator of some of the snails. You know, there's a lot of things you can kind of hide on Instagram, I think, with like some of this stuff. But in the video, when the light, like I'm trying to show you what it looks like and trying to show you the flaws on it more than anything. So there, there, that's, it's titanium. Like, yes, it's going to scratch. Is it affecting any of the carryability or usefulness of a frickin' knife? No, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit, guys. So, you know, a couple things here. Well, I will do some comparisons, but uh, I, I, I don't know how many times I can say it. Like, the action on this is the best in my collection, full stop. It's so smooth. It's running on single row roller bearings. And uh, it fires out and is just like, it floats home like nobody's business. It's, it's an OG Shiragorov. This is the kind of knife that, uh, you know, some of the originals are just frothing over because it's just so simple. Um, let's, let's get it in the lineup with some other knives. And remember the angle of the camera, the angle of the dangle. I'll put it up with the uh, F95 Custom Division. Just a beautiful knife. My favorite, I think, in the collection. And probably the most relevant comparison. The Stellar Sprint Run Custom Division. Uh, or just Sprint Run. And then our Neon. Where is it? Neon Zero, Walter Randolph. Just squeezing in the frame in the bottom there. And that's just to kind of show the different sizes of the knives from large down to medium and small or medium, medium, large, large. And there is a 111 that would fit in the top of this frame as, uh, as an extra large. And I will say this, 111s, I'm being asked so much for that knife, it's incredible. I, uh, I don't know what's going on, why they're so popular all of a sudden, but I cannot seem to keep them. Uh, available. So uh, the next time those come up in North America, I will be buying lots of them. Anyway, that's a side note. So as we can kind of see here, we've got a an inlay carbon, and we've got our modern custom division. So yes, they they share the same name F95, but there's a few key differences as we can kind of notice here. So one would be the captive pivot system, right? Whereas this is more traditional. We can see the hidden hardware versus external. We still have the nice polished flats on the blade, which is a real nice, uh, which is a real nice little feature that, you know, I, I've really grown to love on these knives. And uh, it's one that it's just a little detail that not everyone is doing, but it just makes it look so beautiful. So the polished flats just a stunner. But for the most part, I'm looking at these blades and they are a little bit different. You guys see the tip? See that little curve on the edge of the uh, the turtle in the top, right? The detail work. We've got some different jimping, as we can see. 
different blade stock itself. Come on, focus. Different blade stock as well. And then the frame is pinched with a backspacer versus just wide open, easily serviceable. It's just, uh, you're, you're kind of seeing the modernization of a true classic in this knife. So you're, you're seeing the story, you're seeing the modern story of kind of the process on how they ended up in uh, the F95, which is cool, or the turtle, sorry. Um, let's take a look at a couple others here. All right, so let's grab a couple, uh, you know, I, I would say this is closer in style to the F95 NL production knife than, uh, than the current turtle. Like, let's take a look at that. Do you see some similarities there, guys? Isn't that something? Um, and, and it just kind of goes to show, like, the modern production knife, is it's gotten so good. Yes, it's on, in this case, single row bearings versus multi-row versus roller bearings. But, like, the style of the knife, it's almost unchanged between the two. And I use that very lightly, guys. Unchanged. Like, it's, it's obviously a different knife, different steel, different... A lot of different stuff. But, like, look how close they are. If we grab a F95 uh, turtle... There we go. Let's gently place that in the middle here. Now we can kind of see, okay, there's a few upgrades. We can see uh, some of the shape to the blades a little different. We've got that notch in the top, right? That little swedge up top here. You're starting to see some of the higher end features from some of the previous knives that are making their way, you know, into production. And uh, that is in no way a bad thing. Like 2016 to 2023, you know, this was a, I don't remember, maybe 18 or $1,900 US uh, at the time, maybe 1500 US list for a custom division knife. Now, this particular custom division knife isn't as sought after, um, but you know, you're probably around 2000 to maybe 2500 if it's mint, mint, mint. Uh, this particular one is probably around 2000, maybe slightly less because it's a carry. But you know, this, this guy's 1100 bucks, and uh, this guy's what, seven, eight? So, Great technology has made its way into the production lines that was once only found in their uh, custom division, which I just think is so cool that uh, that they're doing that stuff. Like, look at those blades. Look how they that technology kind of just trickles in. And the you know it might not be polished flats, but it's uh, it's cool nonetheless. That costs a lot of money to do, and I, I don't know if it's done by hand or what, but. Um, you're just seeing a lot of similar features that make its way into, uh, into the modern knife, which is just so cool. So I will put that away. Um, what else would I compare it with? Nothing really. Let's just leave it at that. Um, in terms of fit in hand, it's a, it's a wide, thick, it's a wide, thick knife. So it, in my hand, it fits great. You know, extra large glove. I'm six foot three, big hands. You know what they say about guys with big hands, they like thick blade stock. So uh, it fits great. The jimping's definitely usable. It's a, it's not, it's not, uh, how, how would I use that word? It's not fake jimping where it's not usable. It's not uh, just show. That's what I'm looking for. It's not just for show, it's actually usable. It, uh, if you push hard enough, you probably will wear a callus into your fingertip. As we go down the blade, it's just full flat all the way down to the tip. And in the, the more modern ones, they kind of flare out the end here a little bit. They're not doing that. This is it's a seven-year-old blade. Things have changed, both in kind of what they're doing and then the technology and, and manufacturing. We do have a bit of a mirror edge on the blade itself, and I will try to show that the best the camera can focus, given that it's late at night and light is a little low, but hopefully, Hopefully the camera doesn't freak out, which it's doing. Come on, man. But you can see it's got a little bit of a mirror on there. And this one's actually in really good shape considering it's been carried. Probably opened a few boxes. No chips, nothing like that. It's, uh, it's a great knife. S90V, super strong. We've got, uh, as well, take a look at that lock bar. I like to bring this up. See how it pops out, the thumb. See how it pops up here? You're seeing all that gorgeous milling 
inside there as well. We've got an in a metal lock bar insert, which doubles as an over travel stop and can be easily replaced. It's got a little custom division bit in there as well. That's super cool. Normally, on uh, on the lock bar, we don't get that, do we? Let's take a look. Here we go. Here's the turtle. So they've kind of put it in reverse. So nice, nice little, you know, it's not an eyesore. Whereas this from external, you'd look at it and be like, yeah, it kind of is. It's more accessible and easier to work on, which to a lot of people is much more important. But to others, it uh, doesn't matter. For me, I just like the fact that the lock bar is raised and ergonomically perfect. I love it. Oh, that action is just, I could, I could fire this thing out all day long and just play with that action. It's so silky smooth. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, no backspacer. The, uh, the machining work and the bevel on the top by the flipper tab, it's where they obviously got a lot of praise and uh, this is no different. So as you fire this guy out, beautiful jimping on the front, not the top, but on the front. Your hand falls into that nice silky smooth area. No cuts, nothing like that. Nice thick stock for the pins as well which is always welcome. And then obviously in the back, instead of the backspace, we've got some standoffs here and uh, they, they work. There's a, uh, am I missing that? Or is there, is there a color in there? Or is that kind of burned? Am I crazy? Looks good. Still, I thought it was just polished, but uh, no, it's kind of got a, either a color. It's hard to tell with the light right now. Either there's like a dark blue, like a navy blue in there, or if it's just dark gray. It looks good. It looks really good. I really like that. That's that's cool. The clip is kind of the standard sheer groff clip, and actually is more representative of the production clip than anything. If we look at that, you can kind of see where the shape comes from, which looks great. Super super functional, and uh, this guy does lean onto the. NL or the carbon fiber. It's leaning on to the uh, the form fit carbon or something. That's that's beautiful. You can kind of see how it's manipulated around, almost like it's been vacuumed onto it in a mold, which is cool. And it goes underneath the clip as well, so that when you're sliding your pant in here or your uh, your silk dress, you're not going to uh, get it caught on any edges in there, which is nice. I hope you're not wearing a silk dress. Should be caught. Um, the other thing here is obviously the clip is angled to one side, so it's not like a. It's not a clip that's just sitting kind of, how do I say this? Symmetrical on the tip here. It's angled off to the side onto the frame versus the lock bar. So in hand, when you're holding this knife, you're not putting pressure onto the lock bar, which is, you know, like anything. That's what they're sensitive for is uh, lock bar pressure. And I was talking about this uh, the other day. I did a video on a 110KS and it was just so sensitive to pressure on that lock bar. I had to actually figure out how to hold the knife because that knife was just that one extra size bigger than, uh, than my hand. And I had to actually move my finger onto the frame, my middle finger when I held this thing, I had to move it up instead of onto the clip. So just remember that that's kind of the, the, the weakness with Shira Goroff is lock bar pressure because it's just such a sensitive little little angel of a knife. Um, lanyard gods are still uh, still happy and this is kind of the old school way right where from the side you look at it and yeah you know what you can see that uh, there's a hole for your lanyard much like on the Stellar it's you know right into the frame so there's a hole there whereas the newer models they kind of build it into the backspacer, but you don't have a backspacer here, right? So what I'm saying here, how it's kind of built in and kind of just floating in there where from the side you don't see it, but from the top, it's certainly there. And uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that. I think, do I have a quantum that does it too? So there's a quantum that's doing the same style. Which, uh, you know, it's just, this is a nice thick quantum. This is not a uh, production, but 
that just it's so aesthetically pleasing when there's no hole it's just nice and uh, it just looks good right it just looks real good when you have it built into the back spacer like that so um, that's probably why like if I'm looking at this critically why this particular knife isn't as desirable you know there are less of them right most custom division knives there's 50 now this is from the days where they only did 30 so there's only 30 and you'd think okay well why isn't this five grand if the other ones are three and a half to four and there's 50 of them so maybe you know what maybe give it 10 years and they will be i, I don't know but uh You're just seeing some of the things that, you know, what if it had a nice thick back spacer on it and maybe the lanyard hole, maybe that's the desirability factor. Maybe it's the carbon. If this was a machined F95, maybe it'd be a little more desirable. I don't know. I'll tell you this, if we uh, look on the inside of this, which I'm awful at showing, you can see there's a lot of milling. It's a thick, chonky boy, but uh, it's there's a lot of mill work that's taken out of it and it's balanced it's perfectly balanced for a thick blade like that that's a beautiful thing and then on the tip of the handle inside it we should have right in here four five seven i don't know if the camera's going to pick that up but i will try to show it best i can i can't see on the screen and unfortunately i'm terrible at uh, showing light inside there can you see there i think it says four five seven Oh, it says Custom Division 457. So it's not just a, a date. It's like a full thing. That's cool. That's really cool, actually. Huh. I never noticed that. You think I would notice these things over the years. And this is certainly a knife I could just easily open up, service, take a look at, which I might do. Um, but the problem is, with action like this, why on earth would I open this up? other than just uh, to clean it. Now, one thing I will say about this, the carbon fiber, I believe you can get access to from the inside as well. So if you're looking at, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. That's why it's so light. So if I'm looking at it from here, there's actually a bunch of carbon you can see. So that NL goes right through the frame, which makes it sound a little hollow when you crack it, you crack it out. Maybe it's better to show it this way. There you go. So there we go. So the, the carbon, the black scales on the inside, the black weave of that carbon, you can certainly see on the inside, which is cool. Um, you know, for, for a guy that's like a collector, for someone who's looking for a custom division knife on a budget, for someone who just wants, you know, like a collector and says, I, I want to know where Sheargorf came from because I just think it's cool or for anybody who just wants to feel a classic F95, this is it, man. Like, this this is everything you'll want in a Shirogorov. It's thick, it's bulky, it's got an icebreaker-y vibe to it. It's got a heavy blade stock, S90V. Um, it's got all the coolness factor to it. It's got the Custom Division logo on it. It's just a cool knife, like, uh, and there's 30 of them. Like, uh, there, it's at that magic age where it's either going to be used and carried or absolutely mint in a safe and never looked at. There's not going to be a whole lot of in-between on these. So, you know, for this, yeah, it's got some snails. It's got some, some stuff on it. And you know what? It's, you're never going to lose your money buying this knife. But it's probably just going to go up in price. The carbon fiber, it's nothing special to me. Like, it's, it's not carbo-tie, it doesn't have flakes of stuff in it, it's just standard, like, 3K weave. It looks cool, the light's hitting it, and it looks nice and stuff, but there's nothing super cool to it, comparatively. It's just standard. But it is an absolute piece of history. Feels good in hand, looks good. I think that's a super cool knife. Absolutely love it. So you guys were hounding me to post this, and uh, and I did. 
So hopefully that is uh, hopefully that's enough for you guys that wanted to see the knife and uh, see what a piece of history is like. Um, I certainly love this thing and uh, think that you know the current F95 NL production knife is a nice throwback to this particular knife in that it's very similar size-wise, feature-wise. I just think it's a great uh, it's a great knife and uh, the fact that this one's a custom division, it's just cool. I love it, man. And you know, it's got the lock bar insert. It's uh, it's it's just it's got everything. It's got the screws. It's the custom bits. And remember, yes, the uh, these bit or these uh, screws are you know quote flathead. But please use the tool because they're you know it's going to be getting it's going to start getting harder and harder to find these particular bits in the, in that length. I imagine because the knives are getting thinner and thinner. So, and you know what, the more I look at this, that is definitely blue inside there, because on the pivot hardware, you're seeing here as well, there's some blue to it. So they, this is kind of, they're experimenting with some color, and uh, which is surprising that they didn't do any blue on the pivot, or sorry, on the pivot, on the uh, clip. I would have thought they would have tried to do some blue to kind of match things, which I don't see, which is fine, but normally that's what they would have done like on a modern knife. Oh, the thing fires out so smooth. Oh, I could just do this all day. Just floats home. Just a stunner, man. Absolute beauty. Well, hopefully that, uh, hopefully that ticks the box for you guys. And if you have any questions or if you want me to do more content to some of these older uh, knives that I have floating around that are not mint, this will never be for sale on the site. But, um, you know, there's uh, someone will want it at, one, at some point one day and I'll, um, I'm sure I'm going to work something out. But I can't sell it as new, obviously. It's not even close. Not even close to new. But it is a piece of history. And that, uh, with the cert, is just so cool. Written in Russian, 457. Just so fancy and cool. And the lock bar, I'm just noticing this now, the lock bar bend is external. See that? Whereas now they're all internal. See under the clip? See how the, right here? See that bend on there? It's on the outside of the lock bar, and now it's on the inside. So that's a bit of a change. Uh, and I don't think any of the production knives are done this way either. So that's, I don't know when they did that change. But that's cool. That's funny. I never noticed that. This is this is the, the stuff you notice when you play with a knife on a video for half an hour and you're looking at every little angle, every little piece. And uh, you just pick up on things that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise. I just, this is, I swear to God, I do these videos half for me. So I can look back on them in my old age and be like, I remember having that knife. Back when I used to carry a bug out. That's my old Bladezilla impression. There you go. Take that to the bank. All right, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Check out the website, bladezilla.ca. And, uh, you know, shoot me a message. Follow me on Instagram. Whatever you want to do. I'm always down to chat. Always, always down to chat. And uh, anytime, guys. Like, just message me out of the blue. Don't care. Um... I love this stuff first and foremost, and uh, the business is definitely secondary to my love of the blades, so. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you guys later. Enjoy your week, and uh, see you later. Peace, guys.